I'm Flora Sorio, I'm a first year pharmacy student, and today we are doing poster presentations um, for our pharmaceutical care class. And basically, we're just getting to um, know the different types of careers that are available within the pharmacy setting. What's really great about oncology pharmacists is they have direct patient care. They only have about 12 to 18 beds, usually in cancer clinics or also just in the hospital itself. They work as a part of a team um, with physicians. Some of the cons about oncology pharmacy though is the fact that it's really emotionally draining. You are working with people that are in dire straits basically. A good thing about that though is that you can see direct improvement and really know that you're doing a great job for the patient. Pediatric pharmacy usually deals with patients under 18 years old. They, uh, they are responsible mostly for dosage forms which is regulating um, dose because it's very important. Um, pediatric pharmacy is also a subdivision of neonatal pharmacy. Neonatal pharmacy are um, newborns 36 weeks or younger. They go in rounds, uh, especially neonatal, they, they're constantly with the physicians and patients, constantly watching them. Doctor, I believe it's Dr. Nikki said that she would go without eating sometimes for eight hours, but as long as the patients are okay, she's fine with that. Uh, yeah, this is definitely something I might be interested in doing in the future. I did independent pharmacy. And there's a lot of pros and cons about owning your own pharmacy. Um, some of the good things are that you can have a better relationship with your patients. You don't have to worry about um, making the numbers that say you would uh, for working for a big chain pharmacy. It, it's a lot of money to start and uh, you may not make that bat for a long time so it's a real long-term commitment. One thing that is helpful or beneficial is to have, um, say, a master's in business, but you don't have to. And a drug information pharmacist is someone who's involved with a lot of research and details, and this particular job is one of the cornerstones upon which all other pharmacy is built. Say, if you're working at a a hospital, then any doctor or nurse that has any questions about a drug regimen will be calling you or sending you an email saying, hey, what's up with this? This is not a job, though, for people who say, like having to, their work done at 5 o'clock. These require you to be on your game and continue reading, checking your emails, even when you're home. But on the plus side, this means that you're never going to stagnate in your job because you're always having that constant learning curve and learning new information and applying it to help improve patient outcomes. Our project is on home health care pharmacists. I thought that all they did was go to the patient's home, check their bottles, and leave. There's a whole other aspect to this that's called infusion pharmacy. Um, that's where patients who require IV treatment but don't require hospitalization can receive their treatment at home. It's better for the patient's overall health because, you know, if you're sick, wouldn't you rather want to be treated at home instead of in a hospital? Um, to get into this field, it's really, there's no residency. You just have to know you want to do it and you have to make sure you get trained in IV treatments. Other than that, it's just something uh, you know you just have to want to do. And um, it seems like there's a lot of personal satisfaction that comes from this field. So it's something I'm interested in.